Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Skyrim is a land where many peoples, cultures, and lifestyles converge. And such diversity in the population of the world of The Elder Scrolls V is very much reflected in all the clothes we can find. Indeed, whether it's helmets forged from the fires of oblivion meant to be worn by Daedric worshippers, or simple tunics crafted by humble Nord merchants, you'll find all sorts of apparel options in Skyrim. But some of the armors and clothing types available in this game are unique, in the sense that they're super rare, and often boast in interesting backstories, and usually won't be discovered by most players without videos or articles like this. So, chances are you've already seen the title and know where I'm heading with this intro. Just sit back and relax, as we take a look at our third edition of five secret and unique armors you may have missed in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Starting off, in recent weeks we've talked quite a bit about Movarth Pequeen. He's a former member of the Cyrodelic Fighters Guild, and an ex-acclaimed vampire hunter, who apparently turned out to not be very good at vampire hunting, and was bit sometime a couple hundred years ago. Now, Movarth is himself what he once despised, an evil undead, and he's held up in his large cave just outside the swampy city of Morthal, which he's planning to take over, and has already infiltrated with some of his agents. The quest, Laid to Rest, will see us uncover Movarth's scheme, and storm his cave to put an end to his shenanigans once and for all. However, there's something about this ambitious bloodsucker that the quest doesn't immediately make obvious. Mr. Pequeen has an obsession with shoes. Within the man's personal bedroom, he has a whole shelf dedicated to a collection of them. It seems he's made a habit of taking the footwear of his victims, seeing as there are both Imperial and Stormcloak boots among the apparel, suggesting he hasn't been fashioning these himself at home. No, he's been taking these from corpses. But next to his bed will be a special pair of shoes that are the subject of the spot in this video. Movart's Boots, a unique, one-of-a-kind pair of hide boots. Statistically, these puppies are identical to normal hide boots in every capacity. However, they sport a custom enchantment that increases the wearer's sneak ability by a factor of 15%. No doubt an advantage someone trying to sneak up on various people's necks would quite appreciate. The only other article of footwear in the game that offers a similar power would be the Boots of the Old Gods, which are given as a reward to the player alongside a whole set of armor should you choose to side with the Forsworn during the quest No One Escapes Sidna Mine. Actually, the Forsworn Boots are kind of better in this regard, as they increase our sneak by 20 points, Whereas, again, Movart's boots only do it by 15. So, the winner is kind of clear. Nonetheless, Movart's boots are still close to our hearts. Next on our list, we have what, honest to god, may very well be the rarest and most difficult to obtain item in all of Skyrim. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the elusive Copper and Onyx Circlet of Raven Sadri. So, you're probably looking at this object right now, thinking it seems pretty insignificant. And if that's what you're doing, you're absolutely correct. Raven Sadri's Copper and Onyx Circlet is literally just a normal Copper and Onyx Circlet, with a slight variation in its name. Its stats are mediocre as can be, offering an armor rating of 0, a weight of 2, and value of 88 gold. So, what's the big deal about this thing? Well, it can only be purchased from Raven Sadri, the Dunmer shopkeeper and owner of Sadri's used wares, a pawn shop in Windhelm. The trouble is, it only has somewhere around a 0.5% chance to spawn into his inventory. It's one of the only items in the game that behaves this way. And if you're anything like me, in order to get this thing, you're going to need to be saving the game, bartering with him, and reloading saves for literal hours before it finally spawns in in his merchant list. I'm not kidding, it took like three hours of that bloody cycle before the item finally appeared in my game. So if you're lucky enough to see this thing pop up, 
buy it immediately. If you need to sell the clothes on your character's back, trust me, it will be worth it. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Sure, this item's kind of cool, I guess, but I can just spawn it in with console commands if I ever really want it. Right? Well, dear viewer, believe it or not, this item is one of the very few in-game that doesn't actually have a static item ID, and therefore, it cannot be spawned in inorganically. You can't get it with console commands. For whatever reason, what seems to be happening is Raven Sadri Circlet is actually just a normal circlet that the game immediately renames as soon as it's added to his inventory, rendering cheating a pretty ineffective way of obtaining it. So this is an item that can't be acquired by completing a quest or using console commands. The only way to get it is just to get really, really lucky when bartering with Mr. Sadri. And heck, theoretically, it's possible this will never spawn in, no matter how much you try. With a statistic like 0.5%, you're gonna likely need to be there for a while. So, players looking to acquire the rarest object in Skyrim, as fate would have it, may not need look much further than this Dark Elf's humble storefront. Coming in at number 3, the Noble Clothes are a special set of robes, worn by some of Skyrim's various Jarls. Notably, including Jarl Bulgruf himself. We are constantly exposed to high-status characters donning this especially flashy set of robes. However, due to the fact that all of the people wearing them are, again, Jarls, flagged as essential and immune to the perfect touch pickpocketing perk, this renders the item basically unobtainable, despite the fact we come into contact with them so frequently. Well, the noble robes aren't necessarily totally impossible to acquire. You see, in Solitude, we can find the East Empire Company Warehouse, where the Imperial Trading Company stores its various resources. And here, believe it or not, we can find not one, but two sets of the Noble Clothes, just sitting in a pile of other clothes towards the cave's north end. Interestingly, here, the items will respawn, effectively granting players access to an infinite supply of the otherwise elusive set of apparel. Assuming you're patient, that is. With that said, this is the only way the item can be acquired without using the console. It isn't for sale at any vendors, you can't get it off of bodies, and it doesn't spawn in anywhere else. So, only players willing to infiltrate the warehouse will ever have a chance to emulate the fashion of Skyrim's rulers. Oh, and I should mention, when I say the word infiltrate, I mean it. You have to be careful when you're inside the East Empire Company warehouse, as all of the guards inside will be very, very hostile to trespassers. So either be ready for a fight, or get ready to put on Movart's boots and do some sneaking. Furthermore, while this might be the only way to get the noble clothes, Emperor Titus Mead II, however, does wear a variant of them just with a darker color scheme, and his robes are called the Emperor's Robes. We can loot them off the man's remains at the conclusion of the Dark Brotherhood questline. So, dressing in style, still, can be done. For Fourth Spot, I've waited well over two years to talk about the Ethereal Shield. And now, at long last, I finally have my opportunity. This is a unique Dwarven Shield with a bit of a twist. You see, it's only craftable at a special station known as the Ethereum Forge, a legendary ancient Dwemer smelter that's allegedly the only in the world capable of processing a powerful mineral called Ethereum. During the Dawnguard DLC side quest, Lost to the Ages, we'll discover the location of the Ethereum Forge, as well as power it on for the first time in thousands of years. Once you've done so, the quest will conclude, and then we'll be able to craft our pick at one of three Ethereum items, including a crown, a staff, and this shield. What this means is that the Ethereal Shield can only be obtained by the player if you're willing to forfeit the other two potential rewards. But man, do I not recommend doing so. Like so much what we've talked about up until now, statistically, the Ethereal Shield is relatively identical to its normal Dwemer counterpart, offering the same amount of base armor, 26, the same weight, and the same value. 
However, as you can already see on screen, there are some distinctions. For one, at the center of the shield is a giant circular piece of Ethereum, and it's dotted with Ethereum jewels all around it. Furthermore, it's the unique enchantment that really gets me going about this one. Enemies struck by the shield will become ethereal for 15 seconds, making them unable to attack or be attacked. Furthermore, what the enchantment doesn't tell you is it also causes these ethereal enemies to flee from the player for that allotted time while they look like ghosts. Effectively, what this means is that whenever you bash someone with it, they'll turn into a spirit for a little while and just run away for almost a quarter of a minute. This effectively allows you to take enemies out of combat at will whenever you please. If you're ever dealing with a large group of, say, three, four, or five foes and don't want to take them all out at once, simply give a few of them a bashing with this shield and they'll be out of commission for quite a while. No other item, or for that matter, even spell in the game, quite emulates what this shield is doing. And that easily makes it one of my favorites in the entire game. This isn't something to use in one-on-one -on -one combat with a specific foe you're not having too much trouble with. Instead, only wait for those scenarios when you're feeling overwhelmed by a big group of enemies and want to quickly thin them out so you can take care of the rest later on. Do keep in mind, if the player has the Disarming Bash perk unlocked, or the Shield Charge perk from the block tree, then when you use this item, its enchantment actually won't trigger. So make sure you haven't worked your way up that perk tree too high, otherwise you won't be getting the full effect. However, when it is working properly, the Ethereal Shield is absolutely an item I'd recommend you look into. And finally, last on our list, is an armor piece that in my opinion is definitely the coolest looking of everything we've covered in this video so far. Though I suppose you can be the judge of that for yourself. The Closed Imperial Helmet. So this is a piece of armor modeled in the fashion of a high-ranking Imperial soldier that can only be obtained in three separate locations throughout the entire game. The first, and in my opinion the easiest, is at the Shrine of Talos just outside of Froki's shack in the Rift. Here, all you need to do is head up a mountain, find the statue of Talos, and at its base will be this helmet, as well as some other Imperial-related gear. Seeming to imply that this once belonged to an Imperial soldier who was in the process of deserting due to the fact that Talos worship had recently been outlawed. The second location is at Brinewater Grotto, a place only accessible from the East Empire Company warehouse during or after the Thieves' Guild quest, Scoundrel's Folly. And finally, the third can be inside of Kilkreath Temple during Meridia's Daedric quest, The Break of Dawn. It will be found next to a desecrated Imperial corpse. Any of these locations will offer you access to the helmet. Just keep in mind, these are the only places you can get it. It doesn't statically spawn on Imperials, and it can't be purchased from merchants. So, the first thing that should stand out about this item is its aesthetic. It's modeled in the fashion of Corinthian Greek helmets, rather than the typical open format most Imperial helmets use. This unique appearance, believe it or not, also seems to translate in some stat buffs, as it is the best piece of Imperial headgear in the game, offering a base armor of 18 with a weight of 5 and value of 30. Its closest competitor, the Imperial Officer's Helmet, has a base armor of 17, a weight of 4, and also a value of 30. So, the closed Corinthian helmet, seemingly due to the fact that it's closed, offers one extra base armor and weighs a single pound more than its counterpart. Now, strangely, while no characters in the game wear this closed Imperial helmet, it seems there was one cut character that was removed from Skyrim who was originally supposed to be donning it. Hirbane Soren Shield is an Imperial character that exists only in the game's files, that when spawned in, wears a full set of Imperial armor with this helmet. He also would have had a unique shield called Hirbane's Shield, as well as a unique sword called Hirbane's Sword. It's unclear what role Bethesda had planned this Hirbane Soren Shield character to play had they gone through and added him into the game. However, we do have an idea. You see, with Skyrim, a new series of books were introduced, called Hirbane's Bestiaries. There are three books in this series, Automatons, 
Hag Ravens, and Ice Wraiths. Each one of these books was written by a warrior named Herbane. We don't know what his last name was, but each of these books goes into detail and describes whatever the topic is. So, Herbane's bestiary on Hag Ravens describes the history and fighting style of Hag Ravens. His bestiary on Ice Wraiths describes the Ice Wraiths. You get the idea. It's possible that this Herbane Soren Shield character was the author of those books, or at least was meant to be. And maybe he could have been some sort of boss battle, what with all of his unique equipment. Whatever the case, we'll likely never know for sure. What I can tell you is that his helmet looks absolutely breathtaking. And with that, we are going to wrap up. Five secret and unique armors in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Part 3. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Which of these attire pieces best suited, pun intended, your fancy? And what options should we cover next? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Thanks for watching, and hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.